In this video, we're going to discuss how to determine the distance to a storm based on the time delay from when you see the lightning and when you hear the thunder. So this particular hypothetical problem, a person hears the clap of thunder eight seconds, it, the thunder starts eight seconds after seeing the lightning. So how far was this person from the lightning stroke? We're given that the air temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. So uh, hypothetical drawing, and we have the situation that we're going to rely on uh, the distance x is equal to the speed multiplied by the time, uh, that relationship. But we have to investigate this just a little deeper because we have light traveling and we have sound traveling. Those travel at uh, very different speeds, about a factor of a million different. So the travel time of the sound is the longer number. <clears throat> if we subtract off the travel time of light, then we get the eight second delay. And we're not going to worry about our reflexes and our sense of any time delay in our hearing. Um, so as we consider this, I'm going to claim that we can ignore a calculation of the travel time of light. Uh, when you see a storm, uh, you know, maybe 20 miles away or you know, 30 kilometers and whatever that happens to be, I put in 10 kilometers in this calculation and that's still a long distance away to be able to hear the thunder. Uh, but how much time does light require to travel 10 kilometers? Well, 10 times 10 to the third would be our distance in meters divided by three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. I might want to put some units on here. It is important to have meters for the distance units for both the uh, numbers. But that generates 3 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds. That's uh, ignorable in terms of how much time the sound is taking. So we can simplify this and we're just going to do the travel time of sound is the 8 seconds and uh, not worry about the slight correction due to the travel time of light. Now we do need the speed of sound. In order to calculate this distance, we need the speed of sound multiplied by the time it's taking for the sound to arrive. Uh, the reception of the light gives us a starting clock for this eight second interval. So the light and the sound start at the same time, but the light re gets to our position very rapidly and after that, the sound gradually gets to us. It's still traveling fast, but not nearly as fast as light. But the speed of sound depends on the air temperature. And our formula that I'll use here, you could look this up uh, online. There are different approximations to this, but I'm going to use 331.3 meters per second plus 0.606 meters per second per degree Celsius. And this is for temperatures uh, starting at zero degrees Celsius. We're at 20, so we do get a little bump in the speed from this, uh, this factor, end up with 343.4 meters per second. So we have the speed of sound to find our distance. Um, the x value divided by the velocity is the eight seconds. So you know, we're gonna do finding distance by the rate 343.4 meters per second multiplied by the eight seconds. I came out with 2747 meters, 2.75 kilometers. So if you're curious about uh, safety, uh, you can you know, listen for the thunder. If there is a very short delay, you should seek shelter. Um, converting this to miles, uh, dividing by 1609 meters uh, is the length of one mile, I come up with 1.7 miles away. And even that's a little bit too close for comfort. You probably should be seeking shelter if lightning is within two miles of you. Then we have uh, a, perhaps a rule that you've heard that for every five seconds of delay, that's one mile of distance between the lightning and, and thunder. And let's see how that works. Well, if it's 20 degrees Celsius for the temperature, about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so roughly 343.4 meters per second times five seconds is 17, 17 meters. That's roughly a mile. So some people do use this rule of thumb. If you 
see the lightning and then start counting right away. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. And if you're good at uh, synchronizing your count to the length of time for one second, then if the thunder uh, is detected as you do the 1005, then that lightning stroke was about a mile from you. So there's a simple calculation of distance equals rate times time, a um, little discussion of the speed of sound. Uh, the speed of sound is about a million times slower than the speed of light, so we can ignore the speed of light in this situation. If you like, want to see some other physics and astronomy videos, uh, they're listed at these two websites. Uh, th these sites are free, no registration. You'll see a description of the video. Uh, there is an organization to them, so they're easy to find. And you'll see a direct link to the YouTube video. Uh, as you watch these videos, if you enjoy them, please click subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's no cost uh, for doing that. Keep practicing.